Conditional rendering. You do it probably every day as a developer, but you're probably using the same method over and over again, right? I was doing that as well, but there are more. Actually, five methods. Let me show you when to use which and what to avoid when doing conditional rendering. But what does conditional rendering mean? We have a condition and based on that condition, we want to have a outcome A or outcome B. Somehow something like that. When the condition is true, we want A to happen. And when the condition is false, we want B to happen or to be rendered in that case. But are there more cases? Yes, there actually are. Because let's say we have that case here that we have a condition and if it's true we want a to happen but if it's false we don't want b we just want nothing to happen that's for example a case or let's say we have that case that the condition is actually not true or false but more of a value something that is truthy or falsy because that is something that can happen when we work with javascript because if we have something like product.title and this product is fetched from anywhere, then we have no idea if title actually exists. It could be null, it could be undefined or whatever. So maybe it's falsy. So this would be false and then it's a condition actually. So maybe we have this value, let's say it's product.title like that. And if that is true, we actually want to use that. So we do it like that. But if it is falsy, we can't use it. So we want somehow a fallback. So these are the cases we have. So let me show you the first method. And the first method is called the ternary operator. And it's just this simple question mark here. And the structure of that is pretty easy. We have a condition. And if that condition is true, that's what the ternary operator means. We do A. And if that condition is false, which is this column here, then we do B. And that is just the ternary operator syntax. So if we look into code, we see if the count modulus two equals zero, then the count is even. And if not, the count is odd. And that's the whole magic here. So on the web page, it just looks like that. We have this count and if we increment it one, then it's odd and two, it's even. And now it's changing just all the time. And that is conditional rendering. But that's just the very, very easy case. So what is now if you have the case that you have the condition and if that is true, you want A to happen. But if that is false, you don't want anything to happen. Because what you could do, and what is really tempting to do, is to just return null here. But it's very ugly, so please don't do that. Because there's a better way. We can just use the method two, which is the logical end. So something like this. So if the condition is true, A will happen. And if the condition is false, nothing will happen. So we look into method two, which is the example that if count is bigger than zero, count is greater than zero, is being rendered in a paragraph here. But if that's not the case, then we see nothing. And if we go on that page, we see count zero. If we click increment, we see the paragraph count is greater than zero. Pretty easy, right? I mean, at the end of the day, of course, you could do something like this and it will behave the same. But it's ugly and somehow it shows that you didn't understand the concepts of JavaScript. So just use the logical end. And then we have this case now. And this case is handled by method three, which is the knowledge coalescing operator. I know it sounds pretty, pretty ugly, but it's very easy. Trust me. It's just these two question marks. So not just one question mark like it was with the ternary operator and instead two question marks here. And what we can now do is the following. We fetch something from anywhere in the internet, like Jason Place over there, for example. And then we want to access the posts. So we want to have, for example, the post title or the posts body, which are things that actually exist here. But then I accidentally want to access the posts.footer. This is not existent, but I don't know this here. So I use the knowledge coalescing operator to say, hey, if that is false or not existent or it's null or whatever, then please use the fallback. So if we take a look at this now, we see knowledge code listing example, the title, random lorem ipsum, the body as well, and the footer, no content available. So with this knowledge code listing method, we can secure great fallbacks for our code. And then we have method four. And method four is pretty, pretty underrated, I would say, because method four is conditional rendering on a return base level, I would say. So let's say I want to render different content if the posts.length is greater than 20. Then I want to render more than 20 posts available. And otherwise, I want to render a div which says less than 20 posts available. 
we can just do it with this return based statement because it's just shorter, right? So if the component where we return stuff is really focused to one thing, like this here, for example, or a button, for example, which just is doing one thing, then we can just do it like that. It's pretty, it's clean. Of course, it's not needed. We can do it with the ternary operator, for example. So what we could do is something like this. Also working, but it's more ugly. It's longer. Why should I use this code when I just can use this code? It's easier. And there we are at method five now, which is the switch statement. We have a render content function and based on the status, we check if the case is loading or success and then we return a specific paragraph. Looks like that is pretty easy. I say success, data loaded successfully, error, something went wrong. Pretty easy, but let's be honest here. It's ugly. Please don't use switch case statements. I don't know. I just think there's always a better solution than a switch case. You can't blame me now. I know there are specific use cases where sometimes a switch case statement is needed. So what we could do is we can also do the same functionality with just logical ands. It's shorter, way shorter. This file has 26 lines and this file roughly has 37 lines. I hope I helped you with this video. This was conditional rendering. Have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.